The hot hand phenomenon in sports, typically basketball, had long been accepted as true by everybody. That is until 1985 when two psychologists by the name of Gilovich and Tversky published a paper that supposedly debunked this hot hand phenomenon as a myth. It was thought by fans, players and coaches alike that a player that had just made his previous two or three attempts was more likely to make his next attempt than if he hadn't made those last shots. Take an elite shooter like Stephen Curry. People intuitively feel that if he just made his previous three shots, if he's on a so-called streak, the likelihood that his next shot will go in is greater than his career average of 47% would suggest. Curry again for three. Bang! Steph Curry putting on a show, shooting the ball. Curry with 11 of his 29 here in the fourth. That's why players use the strategy of passing the ball more often to the player with the streak of made baskets, the player who's quote-unquote on fire. Even the coach of the opposing team will advise his players to pay more defensive attention to the player that just made his previous shots. Gilovic and Tversky shocked the sports world by claiming that there's actually no such thing as a hot hand. They described it as a psychological bias that comes from a faulty understanding of probability. Imagine playing roulette you have roughly a 50% chance of getting the ball to land on red. Say you play 10 times in a row. It switches randomly between black and red, and then suddenly you get black five times in a row. What is the likelihood that it will land on red the next time? If you think it's gotta be more than just 50%, you have fallen victim to the so-called gambler's fallacy. The previous outcomes do not in any way influence the probability of the next turn. While it's a bad idea to bet on getting black 10 times in a row ahead of time, the likelihood of that happening is 1 in 1376. It's not like the roulette wheel has its previous outcomes in memory, thinking I better start showing red again, otherwise they will think I'm rigged. The probability for any single outcome still always remains roughly 50%. Gilovich and Tversky applied the logic of the gambler's fallacy to the hot hand phenomenon, implying that just like the roulette wheel, a player's previous baskets have no influence on his next shot. Even Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman affirmed their conclusion, saying, the hot hand is a massive and widespread cognitive illusion. It comes from our natural tendency to detect patterns in randomness, to see perfectly typical streaks as atypical. This ran completely counter to the common sense of the practitioners. Legendary Celtics coach Red Auerbach famously said, who is this guy? So he makes a study I couldn't care less. More recent research from 2018 revealed that Gilovich and Tversky had actually introduced a subtle statistical error into their study by choosing biased sample sizes. In a twist of irony, by attempting to show that everybody was wrong in believing in the hot hand, they themselves were shown to be wrong. The most obvious reason is that humans don't function like roulette wheels. The competence at any given task, be it shooting basketballs or playing chess, varies from day to day depending on many different variables. Simply not getting enough sleep the previous night can have a detrimental effect to the performance. Everybody knows this about themselves, that some days you just get up on the wrong side of the bed and just don't have your usual confidence. So unlike the gambler's fallacy, which is true, the hot hand fallacy is in fact a fallacy, meaning that the intuition of all those basketball fans was right after all. There really is such a thing as the hot hand. Mm -hmm.